I'm your 47th District State Representative, Mark Hargrove. Thank you for trusting me to serve the many communities in our district, which includes Auburn, Kent, Renton, Covington, Black Diamond, and Ravensdale. Thank you for watching today. This week, I finally have news on the proposed state budget. As you may recall, at the March 17th state revenue forecast, the public learned that tax collections were $780 million less than expected. However, what my fellow taxpayers may not have heard is that we are providing government with $3.85 billion more in taxes this biennium, about a 14% increase over last biennium, bringing citizens' total tax bill to a record high of $32.7 billion. With this increase in revenue, I believe it offers us the opportunity to finally get spending under control. But instead of reforming programs to fit within the increased revenue, many state entitlement programs were left in place that create a $5.1 billion spending gap beginning July 1st. On April 4th, House Democrats proposed their spending plan, House Bill 1087, and held the public hearing three hours later. That's not much notice for the general public to read the bill and travel to Olympia to offer their thoughts. Surprisingly, while the public at large had almost no idea what was included in the budget, many special interest groups knew exactly what was in there and were able to testify to its contents, even as the document was still warm from the printer. While there are things I may like in their budget, I remain concerned that instead of using principles to guide how the budget is crafted, budget writers just added more money to the budget and left unsustainable programs in place. House Republicans offered an alternative budget. While there are items in that proposal I may not agree with, it put more money into education, protected the employment program from, for the developmentally disabled, and did not cut public safety. To me, these are priorities that should be funded, and this alternative was sustainable, meaning true reforms were made that would bring spending in the next budget more in line with tax collections. I think there are many items both sides of the aisle could support in both budgets, which could present a wonderful opportunity for bipartisanship and new ideas. I remain hopeful that these last two weeks will be productive and that both parties can come together and work out solutions that all of us can support. Today, I also want to talk about the recent demands from special interest groups and some in the majority party to close so-called tax loopholes to increase spending to upwards of $36 billion. Tax incentives like those given to high-tech data centers in Moses Lake and other companies to encourage job creation are created by the legislature and approved by the governor, which is no small feat. One example being offered by special interest groups is to close the tax loophole for elective plastic surgery. In Washington, plastic surgery is considered a service, so it's not taxed. We don't tax any service in Washington. So it's not really a loophole, it's treated the same way as any service we pay for. I am also concerned about Senate Bill 5857, which is a proposal put forward by the majority party to get rid of tax preferences. What they are not telling you is that it would also eliminate the tax preference for food. That would mean a $1.7 billion tax increase for Washington families. I simply cannot support anything that puts more burdens on struggling citizens. We need more than talking points to solve the spending issues here in Olympia. As I said earlier, we can balance this budget if we look for common ground based on principles of sustainability, prioritizing, and no new taxes. That's it for this week. Please remember that my door is always open to you, and I am happy to assist constituents with finding information and working with state agencies. Please feel free to contact my legislative office anytime. Thank you for the opportunity to serve as your local representative.